What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another My Week With video. So this week I've been driving the 2024 Honda Passport. So the Passport gets a few little tweaks for 2024. It's not really a refresh per se. The interior gets a little bit of a refresh, but the outside is unchanged from a styling standpoint. Now I'll just run through briefly the new little things here for 2024. First off, the Trail Sport trim gets a little more legit this year. It now has General Grabber all-terrain sport tires on it, and they're on unique 18-inch wheels that give you a 10 millimeter wider track. The Trail Sports also now get an off-road tuned suspension, which they say gives you more articulation and a better ride off-road while not compromising any kind of the on-road driving characteristics. And one thing I can say after living with this vehicle for a week is that uh, these tires certainly haven't hurt the ride. Now I think you can pick up on a tiny bit of extra road noise and you know tire noise from these tires. Even this road is you know brand newly paved and uh, you know you can still hear there's a little bit there. I mean, it's still very quiet. The Passport's still a very refined uh, SUV in this segment. But, um, you know, it's just, you're going to hear a little bit more of that. That's going to come with anything with, you know, knobbier tires on it. Um, and so that's supposed to give you, of course, some greater off-road capability thanks to those tires. Uh, but otherwise, you know, there's no real changes here. There's also this diffuse sky blue color that's available here for the Trail Sports exclusively. This one is Sonic Gray Pearl that we have here. Uh, but anyway, so those are the main things. There's also going to be a new black edition here for 2024, which replaces is the Elite. That'll give you other niceties like ventilated front seats and heated rear seats, which you don't get here on this Trail Sport, which is the middle trim. There's only three trims to choose from here. It starts at EXL, and I'll talk more about the pricing here in a minute. But, um, you know, so there's a new black edition here, and that gives you the black accents as well as those extra niceties. Um, and then, you know, aside from that, on the inside here, the biggest change, arguably, is the center console. So that's the part that has changed. They got rid of, you know, the minivan style armrest and gave you a more traditional armrest here with the center console bin and the uh, bin in the center console here can now hold a full-size tablet they say and you also have this wireless charging pad and uh, a center console area where you can fit two smartphones side by side and uh, so a more traditional setup than what you were used to in the prior passports and I want to keep this video brief so I'm not going to go into all of my impressions on the passport the bottom line here is that mechanically it hasn't really changed since this debuted back in 2019 whenever I first reviewed it almost five years ago uh, it still has v6 engines still has the same great all-wheel drive system that is you know fantastic with true torque vectoring all kinds of other perks here the passport's a really nice driving really good handling crossover in the mid-sized two-row SUV segment you probably give up a little bit of that handling edge here with the trail sport now with these uh, less on-road uh, you know focused tires but still should be you know really great and I haven't had any complaints driving this around this week you know there's no surprises here really uh, there's only two other little things I kind of wanted to mention about my week with the passport here the first is that you know you still have this nice speed automatic transmission uh, and unfortunately you know it doesn't get any of the new improvements we see in the new pilot uh, we will have to see you know when we get a new passport I'm hoping it's only a year or two away but them taking the time to redo the center console makes me think that this is gonna stick around a little longer than we might be expecting here um, for this current generation passport but regardless you know we're stuck with the nine speed and it's just kind of slow to shift and I mean I'm not talking manual shifting no one's doing that in something like this but whenever you're just shifting from reverse to drive I mean there's like multiple seconds before it's like okay I'm ready to go now and sometimes the dash cluster will even uh, light up a little warning saying that uh, keep your foot depressed on the brake pedal while it shifts into park and it's like what other vehicle tells you it's going so slow that you have to like leave your foot on the brake while it's shifting into park it's usually an instant thing um so you know just still don't love the nice but that's been a common complaint with pilots uh for this generation as well and uh, you know the 10 speed we get in the new pilot should fix that and i haven't had any complaints with it in my week with the pilot i had last year but you know so it's just unfortunate we still have the old uh, mechanicals here some people might think that's a perk but at least you know with the uh, pilot you still have a v6 for the new generation so there's not really many compromises it's all upside um and so you know it's unfortunate we don't get any mechanical changes here hopefully that does come sooner rather than later uh the only other thing though that I'm disappointed by is they spent all the time to redo this whole center console but they couldn't bother to give us a uh, wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. It's still wired in here while other most other new Hondas have wireless smartphone integration now. This is still running you know the slightly older infotainment system here. Still was great. I still love this system. I praised it back when it first came out several years ago. I still love it. It has customizable tiles. It's nice and easy to use. Very well done um, and so I don't have any complaints with it aside from the fact it doesn't have that wireless smartphone integration. Uh, and just seems like something that wouldn't be super hard to change, but maybe this software just isn't compatible with the wireless thing. I don't know, but that's my only other little complaint here is, you know, most of the other newer competitors here are going to have that wireless smartphone integration, and this does not. 
But aside from those minor nitpicks, you know, the Passport is still a really great thing. Now, the last thing I want to mention here is my fuel economy that I got during my week. So these are rated at 19 mpg in the city, 24 on the highway, and 21 combined. I'm getting 18.3 mpg. Now, I did do some idling to film this interior, and we're in the winter here, so you got some longer warm-up periods and stuff like that. Uh, before I did a lot of the idling, I was closer to 19, so I'm hitting that city rating, and that's totally fine with me, considering I usually get 1 to 2 mpg less than the city rating in my uh, time with a vehicle uh, on these same kind of roads, same kind of driving, which was, you know, mostly suburban back roads kind of cruising, a little bit of highway driving there mixed in, um, you know, but nothing uh, super extended on the highway or anything to help boost that average, really. nice still having this v6 you know it really pulls nice and strong and as we're seeing you know with most of the newest competitors you know downsizing motors that's the trend these days it's it is really nice to have a good old v6 here uh that's been proven that's solid uh, and that could certainly be a, a perk for the Passport here. Um, now, as far as pricing for the Passports here, they start just over $43,000, which is kind of higher than a lot of the other competitors. But the thing to keep in mind is that all of these Passports, the lowest trim is EXL, which means you get leather in all Passports. You get you know, all standard you know, tech as far as the screens and all that kind of stuff, all comes standard. Um, so you come, you know, pretty nicely equipped even if at that, you know, lower price. Uh, and while some of the other competitors might offer a lower starting price, you're going to probably have less equipment in many of them. Um, and, uh, you know, some of them are also even older than this is. And, uh, you know, if you get a fully loaded black edition, it will, you know, be almost 50 grand, which is certainly pricier than some of the others get. But, um, you know, it's just going to come down to, you know, how much you want an older thing like the Passport here or if you want to wait around for the newer things because that's the last thing I have to mention is the competition. And the competition here for 2024 is really heating up. I mean, the mid-size two-row SUV segment has been pretty stagnant for a while. There's a lot of old, you know, standbys here that have been around for a long time. We have the Ford Edge still around, which is even older than this is by several years. You also have the Nissan Murano, which is also ancient. So there are a couple of those that, you know, could use replacing even ba more badly than this one. You know, this is, you know, towards the end of a typical life cycle, but, you know, it certainly is not uh, out of the ordinary for the automotive industry. But, um, you know, there's a lot that are coming on the scene this year. So showing up at various times this year, we have the new Toyota Crown Insignia, which is a larger two-row crossover that's replacing the Venza. We also have the Mazda CX-70 coming onto the scene, most likely here in 2024. And we're also going to have the brand new Hyundai Santa Fe, which is really making waves with its very bold styling um, that, you know, kind of looks like a baby Land Rover Defender or something like that. Um, and so you have those really brand new fresh competitors that are going to be coming onto the scene and they're going to probably embarrass all these older ones that have been around forever just with more space, more tech, you know, more power and, you know, all kinds of uh, stuff as well. They might even come in at lower price tags. We'll have to see what they price all those vehicles at. But, um, you know, so it's just going to get a lot more competitive and I feel like the Passport's going to get lost in the mix until they come out with a new one. It's kind of, you know, Honda's chosen to you know, I guess have a slower update here and instead of getting ahead of the competition here with a new Passport based on the new Pilot, which is what we're assuming is gonna happen is same formula as this one, chop a few inches off the back of a Pilot, give it a slightly more rugged look and, you know, call it a day. We will see, you know, if they do that or something more unique for a new Passport or if the Passport even returns, you know, who knows. But um, it's just unfortunate because this is, you know, fresh here, like the very beginning of this year, but even just a few months in, we're gonna have the new Santa Fe and all this other stuff popping onto the scene. This is gonna make this look pretty outdated, honestly. And uh, there's also been some other stuff that's uh, come up in the past few years that's also a little fresher than this. We still have the uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee, which I spent a week with and really enjoyed, although those can get more expensive. They do start lower than this as well. There's also the Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport, um, which is a little bit more of a coupier SUV and less of a, uh, you know, rugged type thing going with that one. But uh, another one I spent a week with, and and also it was, you know, a very nice thing to live with. I'll uh, leave a link in the description to all of the competitors here that I have driven if you are cross-shopping these. Um, and so, you know, there's just a lot of compelling alternatives out there now, you know, Honda would like to say this is, you know, one of the more rugged ones and the more off-road capable. Um, and they, you know, like to compare it to like a Toyota 4Runner, for example. And even that is rumored to possibly be getting a new version this year. Now that's a truck-based thing. You know, it's not unibody like the Passport here. So it's kind of in a different league with its off-road capability. But, um, you know, you just have, you know, basically everything is going to be fresher here outside of, you know, the Edge and the Murano, uh, you know. And so it's just, um, you know, a little unfortunate that we haven't gotten a new Passport sooner. But in the meantime, I think, you know, we have some nice little improvements here for 2024 to you know, freshen it up just a tiny bit. I don't think it's going to really move the, 
the needle much though, if I'm totally honest. And I'm just eagerly awaiting a all new passport here, hopefully coming uh, in a year or so. We'll have to wait and see. But still, uh, nothing wrong with it. And you know, it's been a very pleasant week here driving the 2024 Passport. But anyway, that's all of my thoughts here on the 2024 Honda Passport. Let me know your thoughts on it in the comments below. Huge thanks to Honda for providing me here with this Passport to review for you guys today. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Take care.